Okay, and now as we come to the last presentation, we will try to put three things together, which is virtuality, money, and regulation, and see how that works. And the floor is given to Andres Zabers about virtual currency regulation. So hi, thanks for the kind introduction and thanks for saving the best for last, of course. So does any one of you actually hold any virtual currencies? Any Bitcoin people here? Okay, there's some in the back. So as you know, as anything reaches a certain kind of popularity, the regulators tend to step in and crush the party. I mean, they're sort of like the lousy neighbor who comes in knocking as the party gets too loud. So I would like to briefly look and explore on what are the regulations and how should the regulatory approach look like. And guys, this is the main issue. Only 35% of the virtual currency exchanges are licensed, meaning that the government has little or no control over what's happening here. So this is what we're going to talk about. And let's move on to my research question and what I'm actually researching. So with this research, I want to find out how should the entities dealing with virtual currencies be regulated. And to find that out, I need to know about the main risks, how those risks should be mitigated, how does the opinion from users differ from the opinion from the regulators? And are the expectations from users different in North America and Europe? So what are virtual currencies? I mean, this is the very fancy definition made by the European Central Bank, which basically states that it's something digital and it's unregulated. And one of the most popular, I should say, virtual currencies are the so-called cryptocurrencies, which are your Bitcoins, Ethereums, Ripples, etc. And they have four main components in them which we should take into account. The first ones being wallets, which are digital and which store the value of your bitcoins. The next one is the blockchain, which is basically just this public ledger of each transaction which is ever made. And that is ensuring that actually the transactions which are being made cannot be altered and are really, really safe, as you might have heard. And about the mining, well, in very simple terms, and not going into details, it's people using their computer power in order to run this network. So how does the regulations look like now? And I will just briefly brief you about what's happening in the European Union and the United States of America without going into too much details on the country level or in the level of the each state. So about Europe, it all started in 2012, when the European Central Bank came and classified on what are virtual currencies and what is the impact. Then the European Banking Authority followed and said that, hey guys, actually banks shouldn't deal with virtual currencies. Then they moved forward one step and said that virtual currency exchanges and regulators should be held to the same account as the conventional financial institutions. And now a very recent development is that the European Parliament has agreed to amend the anti-money laundering law to include the virtual currencies, basically meaning that virtual currency exchanges should be held to the same principles as the conventional banks. As for the United States of America, two main players. The Financial Crimes and Enforcement Network, where they have said that actually exchanges and wallet providers are money service businesses. And they need to adhere to the Banking Secrecy Act, which is the main legislation for the banks in the United States. What their colleagues at SEC has said that if there are any deals involving virtual currencies and investments, then they should be uh, done according to the rules set out by them, no exceptions. So to my research. What I did, I gathered data from two sources. First, the experts of legislation and the actual regulators, and second, the users of virtual currencies. About the experts, I interviewed three experts. First one is experienced anti-money laundering uh, investigator. Second one is legal counsel in the Latvian uh, Association of Commercial Banks. And the third one is senior legal counsel in the Financial and Capital Markets Commission, commonly known as FUCTUX, or the regulator in Latvia. So what did I find out from those interviews? The first one is the overall outlook, that there are still a lot and lot of uncertainties from the regulators. They are still in the phase between the warnings and the actual action, and they are ongoing assessments if they are needed, if the regulations are needed, and if yes, then how should they be? About the classification, it's not real money, and they all pointed out to the ruling by the European uh, Court of Justice, which said that it's actually a contractual means of payment. About the main risks, very simple, anonymity, they're really fast, they lack consumer protection, and they can be used to launder money and uh, finance terrorism. And about the regulatory priorities, well, they said that consumer education should be put first, 
that anti-money laundering procedures and know your customer procedures should be the same as in banks, which means that if something happens that the virtual currency service providers need to provide information about the clients and their transactions. Moving on to the surveys. I surveyed 132 virtual currency users online where I posted my uh, survey in certain kind of blogs and forums dedicated, dedicated to virtual currencies. The age was 18 to 25 and most of them came from Europe or Northern America. What did I find out? First of all, in order to understand whether there is any difference between the answers from the European and North American users, I did the correlation analysis. And as we can see, there's really strong correlation between the answers given by Europeans and North Americans as it is 0.99, which is strong positive correlation. So no differences there. About how they use virtual currencies, we see that most of them use it as an investment and only very, very small percentage use it only as a method of payment. When I asked about most important factors of virtual currencies, as we can see that the first one is, of course, low transaction fee and fast payments. And guess what? Those guys really doesn't care about government opinion. When talking about most worrying events which could happen with virtual currencies, in their opinions, as we can see, the first three ones are somehow related to lack of consumer protection, which I will talk about later. When I asked them, so do you agree that virtual currencies would virtual currency market would benefit if there were regulations, they basically said, I don't know. As we can see that most of them answered here three, uh, indicating that they're neutral about this uh, proposition made to them. And lastly, when I asked them very bluntly that if they would still use virtual currencies if they had the same procedures as in banks, meaning that they would need to identify themselves and the government could access their records, most of them said yes, which I'm really happy about. And now the result comparison, where I compare the results from the surveys and from the interviews. About the overall opinion, the experts do agree that the regulations are imminent and they should be in place. However, the users are still not convinced. About the main risks, both parties agree that it's lack of consumer protection, which means that that should be, of course, tackled as the main priority now for the regulators. And the proposed regulations, well, if the government said that, hey, the AML procedures and the know your customer procedures should be the same as in the banks, the users would still use the virtual currency service platforms. About the conclusions, well, the main risks are lack of consumer protection, anonymity, and fast cross-border payments. To mitigate those risks, there should be certain uh, preventive measures in place, such as licensing, anti-money laundering, and know your customer procedures for the virtual currency service providers. About the main differences in opinion, well, the users don't really see money laundering as a huge issue, while the regulators, of course, see that as a priority, which is understandable. And there are no significant uh, differences from the opinion from North American and European users, indicating that the global approach can be taken to virtual currencies and their regulations. To answer my research question, how should the entities dealing with virtual currencies be regulated, I can sum it up that a measured approach should be taken, regulators should not overstep, and the consumer protection should be put as the very priority to them, and then introducing also anti-money laundering and know your customer procedures. Now to answer the kind questions which were proposed by the referee, what is the current regulatory status of cryptocurrencies and initial coin offerings in some individual European countries? I took two, two examples. First one is Lithuania, where it is popu uh, not popular, but it is possible to have virtual currency exchange, but you need to create two separate entities, one holding all of your, all of your virtual currency assets, and the second having the e-money license to deal with the real money, so to say. And in the Germany, the initial coin offerings are allowed as long as they adhere to the principles which are already set out by the government for all of the other investments. And the other question, what do I think about the legal aspects of recent Latvian initial coin offering like DigiPlus, which raised substantial amounts of money? Well, I will just bluntly cite our regulator, which is saying that tokens issued by initial coin offering cannot be considered as funds or financial instruments. Therefore, they're not regulated by any national consumer protection legislation. So it's still gray and it's still gray. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> questions? No? From out, uh, no from questions. Uh, question from audience. Uh, two questions from audience. Two what questions from audience. Okay. 
Uh, Andres, what is your own personal opinion? Because it has been in the in the public mm -hmm. whether it should be regulated or not. That's the first question. The second one is, do you think RBS should start offering tuition fee for cryptocurrencies? I mean, that people could pay tuition fee with cryptocurrencies? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, to answer the first question, yes. It is needed to be regulated because we can see that the risks are quite high there. And we know that there has been recent cases of, for example, Silk Road, which was a drug trafficking site where bitcoins and other virtual currencies were used exclusively. So there are certain type of risks which cannot be ignored, and they have been ignored for far too long. And about uh, receiving tuition fee in uh, bitcoins, well, you can do the same as Air Baltic, just make it a publicity stunt and then use real currency. Um, thank you, Anders, for your presentation. And uh, as we all know, you're in working in one of the leading Nordic banks and, um, and are quite familiar with the topic. And in your presentation, you mentioned that, uh, yeah, like the like regulators are still uh, over overseeing the situation and are in the phase B and C. Mm -hmm. uh, like that is wait and see. And what do you think of this? Uh, is that still viable? Well, uh, luckily we see slowly the regulators moving from this stage to actual action. We are seeing, for example, the U.S. There have been Senate hearings and all on things all over the place where they're discussing those regulations. And yeah, I mean they need to happen at some point, and better sooner than later. However, like we need to know that still the impact on the so-called real economy, well, or the conventional economy is not as big now. So basically, I mean, yeah, yeah. there still can be some time for the regulators to see, to explore, and to actually look what would be the best way to work with it. And actually, I'm very happy that our regulator, the Fuchtuks, that they are actually making a working group uh, for virtual currencies where they're working with industry experts in order to find out the best way for the, for the regulations. Hope that answers your question. Okay, and last question. <laughs> Actually, not more the question, rather the com uh, comment from yourself, because we all experienced the recent activities around the banks laundering the money, and there was a big move about uh, stopping it. And what I read in the news, I don't remember today or yesterday, that actually Bitcoin value went up $4,000. <laughs> um, well, I mean, to comment about that, at the moment when my little brother and when my father asked me whether they should invest in Bitcoin, I understood that it's complete bubble and you should get out as soon as possible. So, to answer briefly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, that's all. Okay, thank you.